In downtown Anchorage, rescue teams and engineers are still searching the ruins for victims. Some people thought that Russia had bombed Anchorage, uh, and they just didn't know what was going on, and it, it was very upsetting. The earthquake um, started about 5.30 in the afternoon, and um, it shook for about five minutes. Many people had a hard time even standing up in it. It was the largest earthquake ever in North America and the second largest in the world. Uh, it was a 9.2 earthquake. The ground sank nine feet and went 31 feet to the west. Um, it opened, places in the ground just opened up in, in big crevasses. It, it was a very frightening experience for people who were living here. The first thing the people said, they could hear their nails screeching and pulling out of, of their houses in various parts. Ms. Clark, how long was it then before hell came? Well, it didn't seem very long. Uh, uh, lady and a couple of children went by and they said, uh, I wonder if there's anyone in that car. And I called out because <laughs> I wanted them to know that I was there. Imagine. And they, <laughs> they said that uh, they were sure that uh, help would be right along. You seem in pretty good spirits. Uh, uh, how do you feel toward the future now? Oh, uh, you can't keep Alaskans down. When, um the Army Corps of Engineers told the people in Old Town Valdez here that um, they needed to move to a new lo location because the ground had sunk. They were in danger of, you know, we're almost very close to the tide level. Um, and there was a chance that there would be more earthquakes and, and more uh, devastation to the town. So the people decided to move and they had three years to move in. They actually got moved in two years, but it meant building a road out there to the new town site and getting the town site surveyed and, and divided up into lots. And then some people moved their houses out. Other people built new houses out there. The, the move of the town brought money into town because um, the federal government did hire people to come in and plow or get, to put money available for people to come and plow and there were jobs available for mo getting the site prepared for people to move there and putting the roads in and paving the roads and building the schools and building the hospital, building the docks. Um, so it, it was an economic um, boom to the people living here still. We have lived through the staggering events of the past 75 hours. Now it is time to take a good, hard look at the future and what is being accomplished to restore our communities and our lives. The earthquake occurred on Good Friday, and 25 years later on Good Friday, the Exxon Valdez oil spill occurred. So people in town are a little bit leery of Good Fridays, <laughs> especially when the 50th one came up, but nothing happened then. When they moved, the Armored Corps of Engineers said nobody could live in this area for 50 years. That 50 years is up now. For the old towners, this is almost a sacred site. There are people who are new to Valdez who see this land down here and say, hey, this is a great place to build a house and wonderful, absolutely perfect view all the way out Port Valdez, out to the mountains in front of them, out to the mountains behind them. We should, the city should open it up now for people to get house sites down here. And the old timers say, no, no, we don't want that land developed that can be, we're, it, it, we can develop other land around Valdez for 
people to live, but not, not Old Town. For Jack King of Valdez, still longer. It'll be Labor Day, five months away, before he'll finally walk out on brand new feet, the last victim of the quake to leave Providence Hospital, but ready at last for what he's sworn to do, to walk down the street in Valdez again and do it under his own power. 